it on. Okay. Okay. Well, thank you. Um, well, my name is Jose Ogarmisolano. I'm the Chief Innovation Officer at Altos, a company based in Costa Rica. We're a Cisco partner. And also, I probably can say I'm one of DevNet biggest fans. I'm proud to say that I was here in the first DevNet Zone in San Francisco 2014. And I've seen how DevNet's been growing from you know, San Francisco, San Diego, Las Vegas, and now with DevNet Create. So I'm really excited that this event is probably going to mark a um, turning point for Cisco and the whole DevNet Zone, the whole DevNet team, and how they're going to grow in the next couple of years. My company, we're based uh, in Costa Rica, and what we do is basically, and sorry, can you put the timer, the 20 minutes, or, uh, yeah? Okay. Um, and I'm excited to see that um, how well my company has been using Cisco technology to improve uh, the services and the products that we've been giving to our customers. This is basically my agenda. So I'm going to talk about uh, the Altos Corporate Social Responsibility Program, then about Open 311, about a book named The Responsive City, and some open source efforts, and a little bit of a call to action here. So we went and um, started thinking how we can actually improve the community attachment that we have with our local government. And I really love this quote, that community attachment is an emotional connection to a place that transcends satisfaction, loyalty, and even passion. And that's what we wanted for our uh, company to actually have that connection to the local government in, in Costa Rica. We're based in Costa Rica and, and within Costa Rica in a city called Curitabat. And again, we're coming from a small country. And Curitabat is a small, small uh, place in, in Costa Rica. It's only 16 square miles, and it has only 77,000 uh, population of people. So I'm talking from a small country because, again, Costa Rica is only 5 million people. But the kind of problems that we found there, it's problems that you can see in places like Chicago or even San Francisco, DC, or New York. When we start talking about uh, doing something like a corporate, uh, social, corporate social responsibility program, we went with the, what you can say probably the usual stuff. So we started thinking about helping maybe in paying some schools or even go ahead and building some you know, houses. But you can maybe say it's the usual thing that you think when you're doing some CSR program. So we, we actually talked to the government and we thought about doing something like this. So this is a project that we, they done and we were not part of it. But it's like getting this wall that it's a pretty ugly and crappy wall. But getting this wall and maybe improve it. And what they did is actually get ahead and, and engage with the community and do something like this. And it really made the community proud of how they actually get together and how they improve their, you know, the, the, the city where they live. So that's the kind of projects that we think or we thought that we can actually go ahead and work with the government and, and do that. But when we got there, they actually said, hey, maybe with your technical skills, we can put that to better use. And here's the challenge that they sent. They wanted to improve the community engagement. They wanted to use technology to make it easier for the population to give feedback to them. They wanted to us for us to actually develop a mobile application for them to get information from the constituents more easily, then develop a dashboard and analytics so they can get that information and drive the policy decisions that they have. Because, I mean, we're talking government, and sometimes in government, the decisions are not really well informed. So with this mobile app or with this technical you know, skills or information, they wanted to actually go ahead and drive that. We started researching and found about Open 311, and it's, um, it actually ties to what the um, uh, people from the U.S. Department of Commerce said in the, um, in the keynote uh, earlier about how you can actually use open data to improve the government. I have another quote here that I really like. It's that good governance, it's not what creates this glue of civic attachment. Rather, it is civic attachment that creates good governance. And it's basically, um, you have a good government when you get the people engaged. And that's what we're trying to do with this mobile app. 
get the people from the government or get the people from the city engaged with their government. So Open 311, it's an open standard, it's an open model, it's an open data that you can go ahead and report and track non-emergency issues in public spaces. So we're actually going ahead and getting this information and driving that um, to you know, the people from the government and figure out what the best decisions they can take using that information. It's actually a very used standard and you can see cities from all around the world using that standard. For example, you can see Chicago, you can see even San Francisco, that was one of the places that really started using Open 311. And you can see, for example, Boston, you can see Bloomington, and there are a lot of places in Europe that are also using Open 311 uh, technology. So we actually um, started collab collaborating with this team to see, or with the government, to see if we can actually implement that in Costa Rica and in Curitabat. And we started working a little bit with them to, to implement Open 311. Here's some of the details of that technology. So the formats, it's uh, XML is the required format, and JSON is the optional one. The encoding has to be UTF-8 required everywhere. The definitions, you can actually go ahead and create a service. Then you can actually go ahead and you know, do a service request. For example, you can create a service like uh, street light and then a service request that says that a street light is broken. You can create a service that it has to be like, you have to have good roads. And then a service request that, it's, uh, that you have a problem with that, like a pothole in the, in the road and jurisdictions in case you're using that information between different cities. And it's actually a fairly easy to use API or fairly easy to implement API. It's just uh, very six um, methods. So you have the get service list and a get service, a, pot, a post service request, a get service request, a get service request, and a get service request from token. So it's very easy to implement. I mean, it took us probably and I say it took us, but probably it was Alf and his team. Um, it took them maybe like two or three weeks to implement that, Alf? No, it took us two or three weeks. Uh, Bart and Alf did most of the downloads. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah, so we actually implemented our operation using Golang. And again, it took us maybe like under, under a week to actually implement that. So that's the kind of technology that we've been trying to use in in that local government. Here's a very um, easy example. So you have that information about, you know, getting the service request, getting the status and the status note. So it's a very easy to use format. It's a very easy to use um, interface and you have that open data. So you can actually go ahead and request the data from San Francisco. You can request the data from Chicago. You can request the data from Boston. All that data, it's uh, publicly available. And the common problems that you have, it's, it's not rocket science, to be honest. It's, you know, regular things that you can see in your communities. So problems like potholes, which in Costa Rica is a huge problem, sorry to say. But yeah, problems like potholes or broken streetlights, garbage, uh, vandalism, other problems that might compromise a public space. And right now, the, in the technology that you have, it's very simple. I mean, you're just reporting a street light or a problem with street light. But what would be so cool is when you have that mobile app to actually get an alert that if you're walking through that zone and it's, I don't know, 9 p.m., you maybe get an alert saying, hey, there's broken street lights in the next two or 300 meters. So you, you might take another route that is safest for you because you have that problem there. So right now it's, it's more for the citizens to report problems to the um, government, but we still need to figure out the best way to actually get that information and get feedback to the citizens to make their route to home easier or more safe, right? The next step, it's uh, actually talking about this book. So when we start uh, researching more about it and researching more about how we can actually go ahead and improve the, our local government. We started figuring out uh, through reading this book, it's The Responsive City, Engaging Communities Through Data Smart Governance. It's by Stephen Goldsmith and Susan Crawford. 
The Stevens Goldsmith was the mayor of Indianapolis, and then he was a deputy mayor for Major Bloomberg from, I think, 2000 to 2008, or something like that. Um, so they're basically uh, talking about the experiences in different cities in the U.S. And the challenges that you can find, because it's not always the technology that technology that is the hardest part, and sometimes the problem is cultural change. For example, you get some resistance to change. And we were lucky enough to have a conversation with the CTO of the city of Boston, and he told us about that in some places they're actually having a hard time implementing some technology, and they're waiting for the people there to, sorry to say, but for the people there to retire. They're, they don't want to actually fire people, but they're waiting for the people there to retire in order to bring people that are more, you know, easy to adapt some, to some changes. They're also having some, to train some people in this technology. I know that we say that it's so easy to actually get a nice smartphone and go to Facebook or something like that, but it's not always easy for some people. I mean, um, if you say that you have maybe 60 years and you've been for the past 30 to 40 years doing something like, you know, getting a paper and doing it like that, it's not always easy for them to do it um, using, you know, a smartphone. You also have even legal challenges. In some agencies in Costa Rica and some agencies in the States, you have the problem is that the people are worried if they can actually go ahead and even share the information between agencies. It's not always as straightforward as you would like. So you have to actually take care of um, what information you can share and what information you can't share, right? Then you even, <laughs> that's the hardest one. You even have political challenges. Maybe you have a very good initiative, but the subsequent government does not want because it was from a, another party or you know, from some other person, and they don't want to continue that initiative. So sometimes the technology challenges are not the hardest one, but the hardest one maybe are the, the challenges that you face in the social part. And, um, yeah, and you get the, even the technology ones that like, for example, using old technologies or monoliths or even having difficult integrations. <laughs> and the hardest one is even having lack of information di in digital format. In the morning we talked that maybe having PDFs is not the best way to actually share information, but at least a PDF is way better than having to go to a, you know, a storehouse or a warehouse where you can't have a lot of paper. And we face that problem in Kuridabad and a lot of the places that we talk in that book you can actually see the problems that they had because a lot of the information that, they, um, that was useful, they actually had that information in paper and they didn't have that information readily available for everyone. So I'm gonna talk a little bit about um, use cases or things that um, the th uh, people are doing in, in places, for example, in Boston. So they have the 311 app in Boston. I don't know if somebody here is from Boston or Massachusetts. No? Yeah? Okay, we have one. Um, so they have this 311 app uh, from Boston where you can actually go ahead and again report and there's a problem with a car, there's an abandoned car, there's a problem in the street light. And they call it like their internal part, it's the CRM, which um, we are used to call it like a customer relationships manager, but for them it's a constituent relationship manager because they're trying to improve the service that they're giving to their citizens, right? The other part is they're having a mobile app for their city workers. So um, with this mobile app, it's very easy to them to actually go ahead and um, assign a task to a worker that it's, uh, they don't have to go back or come back to the headquarters or the, you know, to the government and then to the city hall and then um, assign a new task. So they can get that task very easy in their mobile app. So one of the use cases that they've been talking about it's a, a person that it's handling maybe in information about the recycling, and they got a 311 request for information, and in five minutes, because that person was very near to where the person that requested the information, so he went ahead and delivered that information like in five minutes. That is something that if you're used to working with government, you will probably say, hey, it's gonna take probably one month to get that information, and they were able to handle or deliver the information in just five minutes, which was an amazing experience 
from a, a user experience kind of a, you know, point of view. In Kuridavat, in Kuridavat we have that application. It's called Joel Calde or um, Hey Mayor or something like that. So um, they're using that application to get information about, again, the same problems that you face in all these big cities. Problems like rats infestation, problems like, uh, again, potholes or broken taillights. Um, and they're actually trying to now improve the application to do floods monitoring, right? So they're building sensors with the community to put in rivers and using that information to actually get an alert, like not a Lambert alert, but you know, like a public alert using the mobile app. So they can actually go ahead and um, make it safer for, for the people living near a, a river, right? In Chicago, um, Chicago is a fascinating study case. Chicago is doubling down on their information or their investment in technology, and they have it centralized in a big initiative. It's the Digital Chicago. They even got a donation from the, a grant from the, the Bloomberg Fund Foundation, a $1 million grant, to work in these projects. Uh, for example, with Plenario, with Plenario they had, uh, it's a centralized hub where they can actually go ahead and get information from the different open data sets and make that available to people from, you know, from the Chicago so they can develop some applications. They have also Open Grid, that it's a dashboard, a geospatial dashboard that makes it easy for them to analyze information in historical or event-based information to see, for example, again, maybe uh, 311 service calls, maybe 911, um, 911 or 911 calls. They can get information about, uh, I don't know, for example, fires, and they can actually go ahead and cross-reference that information. And you have also uh, use cases in Rio de Janeiro, which I feel bad because probably F Flavio from the Cisco office in Brazil should be up here talking about it. But uh, the Cisco Innovation Center in Rio actually um, created or worked with the local government for the 2016 Olympics. And they actually built a couple of useful uh, cases. They have manhole monitoring because they had a problem with garbage in the manhole. So when it rained, they're actually the city uh, flooded because they had the problem with the garbage. So they built an application to actually monitor that and send the people from the government to clean it up so they can avoid uh, that, that problem of flooding. And one of the uh, use cases that I really like, and it's uh, interesting, not really sure useful, but at least very interesting, is that they're doing traffic monitoring and assigning like music notes to buses or a music bus and music note to taxis or cars. So you can actually go ahead and um, have information about music of the city. And I don't know if that's the right name, but it's something like that, music of the city. So you can actually take your smartphone and depending on the traffic of, day, of that day, you can actually go ahead and hear, um, hear depending on the buses or hear music, and no music notes, depending on the taxis or the cars. So it makes, it, it makes the city alive and it makes the community more engaged with their, with their government. Finally, uh, one of the things that I would like to talk about is that Here's the application that we've been building. It's a native script application uh, for the mobile app, and it's a backend for Golang. And what we're trying to do is open source it, and we're actually going to open source it um, for getting more community traction because, again, this is part of our corporate social responsibility program. So um, it's, a, well, it's a name to be defined, so if you have good options or if you want to actually name it, just not do it like the UK body mic face uh, thing that they did <laughs> the past year. But um, I'm actually going to upload it, or we're actually going to upload it to GitHub. And I'm when once it's uploaded, I'm going to put in the Cisco Spark uh, space, the, the DevNet space. So if you're interested in this technology, please um, go to developer.cisco.com. And the bottom uh, part, you can go ahead and sign to the you know, Cisco Spark chat for DevNet. And probably in the next couple of weeks, I'm going to show that information and share it once it's on GitHub. Our basic idea is to form a community around this, um, around this mobile app. 
and trying to solve those small problems or big problems that some of the cities can have. My call to action, um, again, I'm a huge fan of DevNet, so I really like the four pillars that they have. The first one is learn. So please learn about technologies like Open311, like Planario, like OpenGrid, and maybe that, that um, mobile app that we've developed. The second pillar is connect. Please connect with your community and connect with your uh, local government. It's something where you can actually make a difference. The third one, inspire. You can truly inspire your colleagues, your neighbors, or your authorities. You have that power to make a change. So please get a, um, you know, connect or inspire people around you. And uh, final part, code. Your contributions are going to be very valuable. It's something that you can go ahead and make a change in, in, some, in some people's life. Imagine maybe um, helping some people, that a single mother that's having problems with her family, to actually go ahead and get help more easily. Or imagine maybe a homeless person and help them helping them get back on their feet. Or maybe a child abuse victim to get better service from their service from their social worker. So those are the kind of projects that I believe that you can actually go ahead and make a very good difference. The final quote that I really like, it's from, and pardon my French, and not because I'm going to say a bad word, because just because I don't know how to pronounce it, but from Antoine de Sonic Supri, it's uh, the author of The Little Prince, and I really like this quote. If you want to build a ship, don't drum up the people to collect wood and don't assign them tasks and work, but rather teach them to long for the endless immensity of the sea. So what I'm trying to do is have you actually long for the endless change that you can provide, the endless goodness that you can do within your local government and the impact that you can have in people's lives if you, do, if you start working with technologies like these ones. Uh, well, and finally, well, the references that uh, I can share with you, uh, basically that book about the responsive city and technologies like Open311, Planario, OpenGrid, and that's it. Well, um, thank you, basically. Okay, um, so a big round of applause for all of the speakers, uh, including Jose, so thanks guys, much appreciated. And uh, I think our first speaker may have stepped out. So, <laughs> um, great, well thanks a bunch. Stick around for the, the evening keynote giveaway stuff. Um, and uh, thanks again for coming to DevNet Create.